First of all, thank you all for coming to this uh, press conference. I wanted to say a few words on the work of the multi-ministry task force in dealing with COVID-19 and also to respond to the remarks made by Professor Tam Paul Tambayo on this topic. Uh, Professor Tambaya claimed that the MTF has not been relying on the advice of medical experts and specifically that the Manpower Ministry issued an advisory to employers telling them not to get their workers uh, tested against the advice of medical experts. Uh, these are baseless and false allegations. First, the MTF has always relied on scientific evidence and the advice of medical experts in our work and in coming up with our decisions. The medical experts are an integral part of our team. We involve them in all our deliberations and every time Minister Gan Kim Yong and I do a press conference, we have the Director of Medical Services with us. All of you can see that. We've been doing this from the start of the outbreak. Second, on the specific issue of the advisory by Mum, Professor Tambaya has got his facts wrong. Because it was not Mum that unilaterally issued the advisory, it was the doctors and medical experts that had requested Mum to put out the advisory to the employers. Remember, this happened in February after the Salita Airspace aerospace park incident. And at that time, many employers were asking their workers to go to the A and E departments of hospitals to be tested in order to be certified free from the virus and fit for work. And it was the doctors who could not issue such a memo to the employers. And that's why the doctors and medical experts had asked mom to put out an advisory to clarify the matter with employers. You know, I fully respect Professor Tambaya as a leading expert in his field. But it is very disappointing that he has deliberately chosen to distort the facts just to try and score some political points. I had fully expected and pre I was prepared for the SDP to do this, but I had expected better of Professor Tambaya. The, you know, he claims the MTF is distracted, but it seems that he is the one who is doing the politicking and undermining the work of everyone on the front line. Ultimately, uh, Singaporeans will see and judge what we have done. We have been fully engaged in this fight against COVID-19 continuously for the past six months, and that's how we have kept our infection rates low in the community, protected the lives of Singaporeans, especially our vulnerable groups. We have mounted a major operations in the dormitories to test and clear all the workers. We are more than halfway through. We are on track to completing, completing this major task very soon to clear the workers, take care of them, ensure their health and also their well-being. And importantly, we have kept our fatality rates in Singapore amongst the lowest in the world. So these are the things that we have been focused on throughout this period. And remember, as, I've, as we've said all along, this fight is far from over. Uh, the pandemic will still be with us, at least until a vaccine is found. And even when a vaccine is found, uh, we may still have to continue learning how to deal with COVID-19. So there will be still difficult issues for all of us to confront moving ahead. And that's why this election is so important. And we hope Singaporeans will consider all of these points carefully and choose the team that will enable Singapore to overcome this crisis. I'll be happy to take any questions from you. Uh, morning, Minister. Uh, can I ask, it's around the midway mark of the campaign period. Mm -hmm. Can I ask, uh, how, what, what's your assessment of uh, parties' walkabouts, uh, uh, safety distance measures? Are you satisfied that they've been followed? And can I also ask you to spell out what are the SOPs that you have given to the uh, campaigning 
parties so that they can, you know, because they attract a lot of crowds sometimes at markets, uh, residents come over to them. Are you satisfied with their performance? So, um, on the part of the MTF, we've put out the national guidelines that would apply during phase two, as I've, we have repeatedly explained, the elections department, based on these prevailing national guidelines, has put in place a set of protocols and uh, requirements for all candidates and all parties to follow. Uh, they have also deployed safe distancing and ambassadors on the ground, as well as enforcement officers on the ground. Uh, I've not been all over Singapore, you, many of you have been, but based on the reports I've seen, obviously uh, the, measure, the practices on the ground are uneven. Some could be better, and I'm sure where there are lapses, where there are areas where, which can be improved, the Elections Department has its people, be it safe distancing ambassadors or enforcement officers there to quickly go in, remind all the relevant parties, be it candidates, activists or helpers, uh, what the necessary measures are in order that the elections co can be conducted safely. Uh, hi, Minister. Um, how do you gauge Singapore's performance in tackling COVID-19 since nomination day, since some, like you know, Dr. Tambaya, also have criticised the rising infections? Um, and he's also said, accused you of campaigning during the uh, ongoing pandemic and yesterday we've heard Mr Chan mention how you have uh, you along as other ministers have uh, not campaigned as usual so could you set the record clear on how much are you on the ground uh, sure doing sure this? so as I've said from the outset even before this uh, campaign started the work of the MTF continues we continue to meet uh, we continue to monitor the reports every day, looking at the daily updates, um, working with all the members of the team, including the crisis management team, comprising public health officials, experts, and all our officials on the ground, uh, to oversee the work that's required to control the infection. That work has not stopped. That work continues uh, even right through, even now. So. Whatever spare time on top of that work, that's where I come in to the ground to meet my residents. Um, that's the situation. Uh, the work is important because we do not want to compromise at all the, uh, important, the work that we have done and the requirement to continue to keep Singaporeans safe during this period. On the rise in cases, uh, we have also explained this before, that if you look at all countries around the world that exited from the lockdowns uh, because of the resumption of activities, election or not, right? it's really because of the relaxation of the very strict movement control measures and when activities resume, one must expect the number of cases to go up. This has happened in all countries that have exited from their lockdowns, and we knew it would happen in Singapore too. We had anticipated this, and we had said this from the very start, after we exited, or as we were going to exit from the circuit breaker, entering into phase one, and then phase two. What's critical, as we have always highlighted, is not about the rise in cases which we had anticipated, but our ability to move in quickly with testing, with tracing, to contain and ring fence the cases. And that's the work that's ongoing now. You, we've explained how we've done this in the case of the Tempanis cluster, and we are continuing to monitor very closely any new case, any new cluster. We move in quickly to ring fence the cases so that we can control the infection and prevent large clusters from, from forming. Thank you, Minister. I'm Sokhui from Channel 8 News. Um, could you just clarify on uh, Dr. Tambaya's uh, allegations? Because you're saying that back in February, MOM issued an advisory to the employers to say that they'll be penalised, they'll be penalised if they were to send their workers on mass testing. Um, and that's the reason why the cases spike up, up sure after. So could you clarify on that? Thank you. So as I explained just now, number one, 
mum put out the advisory not on its own, but based on the advice of medical experts and doctors. And the reason why they did this was because the employers wanted their workers to be sent, not just for testing, but to be certified free from infection and fit for work, even when the workers are well and have no symptoms at all. And the doctors themselves say that it's not possible for us to issue such a memo certifying that the workers are free from infection and are fit for work. The doctors were unable to do this. And that's why MOH, Director of Medical Services, the professionals felt that this needed to be clarified and they asked mom to put out the advisory. And if you look at the mom advisory, it was very clear, right? If your workers are not feeling well, please send them to the GP where they will be looked at by a doctor and then the GP can assess whether or not this person needs to be tested. So that was the advisory that mom put out completely based on the guidance of the doctors and medical professionals. Professor Tambaya alleged that somehow mom did this contrary to the advice of the doctors, which is false, baseless, and not the case at all. Uh, Minister, this is Nicholas from Yahoo News. <clears throat> uh, so you said that uh, Dr. Tambaya's allegations are baseless. Uh, you also acknowledge that right now on the ground, safe distancing, enforcement and all is very uneven. So how do you respond to the criticism that it's unsafe to hold the elections now from many of the opposition parties, especially given that mass events are still considered unsafe to hold? So the question about whether the practices are uneven, I think applies across the board. It's not just about candidates. We do know that there are FMB operators, you know, that are not doing as much as they can. We do know that there are places where there are crowds, uh, where people do gather. Right? So it's not about elections, right? Whether or not um, in phase two, the rules are complied with uh, to the fullest extent. I think that's something that we are concerned about. And we continue to have enforcement officers on the ground, safe distancing ambassadors on the ground. And we continuously remind every Singaporean that they have, everyone has to do their part and take full responsibility for this effort. It's not just relying on rules and restrictions and enforcement officers. All of us must do our part as individuals uh, to fight this, uh, to, to, to be part of this battle against COVID-19 together. So this is not an issue of elections. Elections, you know, whether or not you have elections, we will be dealing with the pandemic for a long time. Like, as we have said, it's not a matter of months. It could be more than a year. So this situation, this whole issue of learning to live with COVID-19, learning to comply with safe distancing measures, embracing this as a habit, really has to be integral to our lifestyles. And all of us have to do more. Yeah. Friends from the media will be taking the one to, last question. Yeah. yeah? Morning, Minister. Hazek here from CNN Digital. Um, do you have a response to uh, AWARE's criticism of how PAP characterised its argument about the 10 million population? No, I, I mean, that's a different matter altogether. But uh, on this particular issue, I think we have um, put out for the record what the government has said on the figure and the facts speak for themselves. Uh, I think what's disappointing based on the debate we had on the population figure, and now having to deal with this other false allegation on the work of the MTF is that uh, we are dealing with a very serious campaign, a very important issue, a, a very important election where our lives, our jobs, our futures are at stake, and yet we are unable to you know, have a campaign focusing on facts and focusing on the core issues but having to deal with false allegations time and again, in this case from the SDP in particular. Uh, so we, again, as I say, we hope Singaporeans will understand what's at stake, understand the seriousness of what we are dealing with, 
come back to the core issues that we are having to confront. The fact that this is a real crisis, it's not over. There is much more we need to do in the coming months, potentially even beyond a year, dealing not only with the health issues, but the very real economic issues. And we hope all of us will um, be able to see through some of these uh, false allegations that are out there that are circulating and consider very carefully the team that they can trust to lead and to work with Singaporeans to overcome this crisis. Thank you.